During our focus group, uh, the main health issues discussed included smoking, the STD rate, alcohol abuse, fitness and nutrition, skin cancer, relationship violence, mental health, and communicable, communicable disease prevention. During our discussion on skin cancer, participant number four had a personal skin cancer story, um, and it was based on, based on his grandfather. So his grandfather had just recently passed away from melanoma that had gone undetected for years. The participant's father also had some spots on his body that he was currently having looked at. And also the participant would be going to have a skin cancer screening for himself in the near future. So it was something that was very personal to him at that, that, at that very time. Other points that were mentioned during the discussion on skin cancer were the lack of availability of sunscreen for the college students and the lack of awareness and seriousness of melanoma skin cancer. So through our research and our focus group findings, we concluded a melanoma skin cancer program aimed at the college at Brockport students would be most beneficial for this population. The purpose, purpose of our project was to develop a melanoma prevention program for SUNY Brockport students. This was also to increase sunscreen use and the intention to use sunscreen among Brockport students. Behavioral intention has been shown to be a good predictor of actual behavior. Therefore, only intention to use sunscreen was measured. Our program targeted knowledge and the contract perceived susceptibility. We had two learning objectives for knowledge, to identify melanoma as a type of skin cancer and to identify melanoma as the deadliest type of skin cancer. Our objective for perceived susceptibility was to identify melanoma as, as a personal, to identify personal risk factors for melanoma. Lack of knowledge and awareness and the seriousness, seriousness of melanoma beliefs and associated with de the development of melanoma and the availability of sunscreen all help to contribute to whether or not people use sunscreen on a regular basis. These are our booths that we had in our program. The first booth we had was to increase perceived susceptibility, and this was designed as an educational booth, Melanoma in You. This included pictures, of careers, activities, and sports that would that could give people that would cause a risk of melanoma skin cancer. The goal of this booth was for, for participants to understand the multiple ways of being at risk of melanoma. We also had handouts that had suggested suggestions for proper clothing, makeup that has SPF, and sunless tanning options. Our next booth was to increase perceived severity. We designed an educational booth called the Seriousness Booth. This was about melanoma. This included visuals and statistics and educational pamphlets. This was for the particip participants to be able to identify melanoma as the deadliest form of skin cancer on the exit survey. Our last booth was to increase awareness. We designed an awareness educational booth about melanoma that provided also st statistics and educational pamphlets. To, degree, to decrease perceived barrier, we provided incentives including travel size, refillable sunscreen booth bottle, bottles at each of the booths. On these next two slides, this demonstrates on how each contributor, contributors to sunscreen use behavior were targeted. And then this is the rest of our intervention map. <clears throat> so now we're going to move on to implementation. So when and where. 
Well, our program was um, created and then we, November 18th, we had a luau theme in the College of Brockport Student Union Activity Room. We chose the activity room because it's a separate location, although there was lots of traffic. Um, this was staffed by health education method students. There were three program booths, as Bobby just stated. So you walked in and there was one booth and you kind of did a horseshoe to the post survey and the pizza and refreshment table. Our recruitment was through personal invitations that were passed out throughout the College of Brockport. It was on the home page or event page. Also, RAs um, distribute them throughout the dormitories. Our recruitment poster, um, this is an example of it. We advertise the fact there'd be free pizza, Hawaiian punch, who was invited, what it was about, where it was, when, and why. So how did we evaluate this program? For our evaluation, we used the quasi-experimental to, compa to compare pre and post tests. Our pre-surveys were located outside of the program room and away from the educational booths. The post-surveys were located at the end of the horseshoe inside the room. Surveys were paper-based. They were linked, linked by the last four digits of the Brockport student ID number. The control group participants were made up of liberal arts students um, that were randomly selected. Intervention group were the people who received our program that day. So we used the pre the post and pre-surveys to measure knowledge, perceived susceptibility, and intention. We measured knowledge by asking participants to identify melanoma as a type of skin cancer and identify melanoma as the deadliest skin cancer. We measured perceived susceptibility by asking participants to indicate their personal risk for melanoma. Then we asked, then we measured intention by asking our participants um, their use, uh, the use of sunscreen by indicating their intention to use the sunscreen within the next three months, coming spring and summer. Five survey questions. These questions were on a five point scale, one meaning never and five meaning every day. In the following slides, I'm going to review the results. Participants acknowledge knowledge and perceived susceptibility were compared pre and post scores by chi-square. Intention to use sunscreen by participants were um, examined through the paired sample t-test. Participants to control group knowledge and perceived susceptibility were measured taking into consideration baseline differences. Intentions to use sunscreen measured through linear regression controlling for those baseline differences. In the following, I will explain a little bit more. Okay. So our results, program participants, 150 program participants total. As you can see, men and women, there was really no big difference significantly in sex. So even versus control group to intervention, about the same numbers. Our participants improved upon two measures of knowledge, melanoma as skin cancer and melanoma as the deadliest skin cancer, and one measure of perceived susceptibility, the lack of sunscreen as a risk, between pre and post tests. Following table, the results, the changes in sunscreen intention from pre to post test. <coughs> Our participants increased their intention to use sunscreen in the next three months and the coming spring and summer.
In the following table, you can see the control group was significantly more likely than the intervention group to report current sunscreen use. Intervention group was significantly more likely than the control group to report usual summer and spring sunscreen use. Because of these baseline differences between control and intervention groups, we decided to control the typical sunscreen use in the subsequent analysis of differences between intervention and control group. So the relationships between the program participants and acknowledge and perceive susceptibility. After controlling for the usual use of the sunscreen spring and summer, students who received the program were four times more likely than the control students to correctly identify melanoma as a skin cancer and 15 times more likely than the control students to correctly identify melanoma as the deadliest type of skin cancer. The relationship between the program participants and the intention to use sunscreen. After controlling, once again, the usual sunscreen use, students who received the program reported significantly greater intentions to use sunscreen in the next three months and during the coming spring and summer. To summarize, sun safety increases knowledge and attentions to use sunscreen as demonstrated by pre-post-test changes and differences between the intervention and control groups. There were no changes in perceived susceptibility. This may be due to the measures used to assess these constructs. There were several limitations to our program and evaluation. Time and money. We only had one week to implement our program, therefore, this didn't give us enough time to create materials and to also prep the health student volunteers on our goals and objectives of our grant and also to get them familiar with our content. We had limited funding, therefore it was hard for us to get as many sunscreen samples and good or better educational pamphlets. Our resources were limited due to the time length and we could have gotten more sunscreen samples because we did actually run out during the program. Therefore, if we had more of those, it could have been better. Measures of theoretical constructs was also a limitation. We also did not assess actual behavior change. This was hard to tell if the program was truly effective or not regarding the behavior of using sunscreen. The quasi-experiment design was not the preferred experimental design to see if the program had an effect or not on the students. Therefore, recommendations for the future programming would be more preparation time, improve and add measures of, the, of theoretical constructs, and experimental design for evaluation. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge um, Dr. Jennifer Boyle, Josh Fegley, Colleen Donaldson, and Libby Caruso for their motivation and support throughout this entire process. We couldn't have done it without them. Um, we'd also like to thank um, our fellow Health Methods Block students that helped with the implementation of Sun Safety Shield Us Now.